This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Church Street United Methodist Church proudly presents Rejoice. Good morning and welcome to worship at Church Street United Methodist Church here in downtown Knoxville, Tennessee. Thank you so much for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about our ministries and programs, I hope you will go to our website and read there about other opportunities to serve and to worship. I want to let you know that for the next two Sundays, next Sunday and the next, June 11th and the 18th, we'll still be here on Rejoice, but you'll notice that we will be at Lake Junaluska, North Carolina. It is the meeting of our Holston Annual Conference, and so we're going to record there. So prayers for us as we pray for uh, good weather and find uh, quiet places to record with all those people. But we look forward to being with you those weeks as well. And now let us open our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship Almighty God. Our Psalter this morning is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth! Your glory is chanted above the heavens by the mouth of babes and infants. You have set up a defense against your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them? and mortals that you care for them. Yet you have made them little less than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You've given them dominion over the works of your hands. 
You have put all things under your feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. reading of our creation story. In the beginning, God created the sky and the earth. The earth was empty and had no form. Darkness covered the ocean and God's spirit was moving over the water. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, so he divided the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. Evening passed and morning came. This was the first day. Then God said, let there be something to divide the water in two. So God made the air to divide the water in two. Some of the water was above the air and some of the water was below it. God named the air sky. Evening passed and morning came. This was the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered together so the dry land will appear. And it happened. God named the dry land earth. He named the water that was gathered together seas. God saw that this was good. Then God said, let the earth produce plants. Some plants will make grain for seeds. Others will make fruit with seeds in it. Every seed will produce more of its own kind of plant, and it happened. The earth produced plants. Some plants had grain for seeds. The trees made fruit with seeds in it. Each seed grew its own kind of plant. God saw that all this was good. Evening passed and morning came. This was the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the sky to separate day from night. The lights will be used for signs, seasons, days, and years. They will be in the sky to give light to the earth, and it happened. So God made the, the two large lights. He made the brighter light to rule the day, and he made the smaller light to rule the night. He also made the stars. God put all these in the sky to shine on the earth. They are to rule over the day over and over the night. He put them there to separate the light from the darkness. God saw that all these things were good. Evening passed and morning came. This was the fourth day. Then God said, Let the water be filled with living things, and let birds fly in the air above the earth. So God created the large sea animals. He created every living thing that moves in the sea. The sea is filled with these living things. Each one produces more of its own kind. God also made every bird that flies, and each bird produces more of its own kind. God saw that this was good. God blessed him and said, Have many young ones and grow in number. Fill the water of the seas and let the birds grow in the number of the earth. Evening passed and morning came. This was the fifth day. Then God said, 
Let the earth be filled with animals, and let each produce more of its own kind. Let there be tame animals and small crawling animals and wild animals, and let each produce more of its own kind. And it happened. So God made the wild animals, the tame, tame animals, and all the small crawling animals to produce more of their own kind. God saw that this was good. Then God said, let us make humans, be, human beings in our image and likeness. And let them rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky. Let them rule over the tame animals, over all the earth and over all the small crawling animals on the earth. So God created human beings in his image. In the image of God, he created him. He created the male and female. God blessed him and said, have many children and grow in number. Fill the earth and be its master. Rule over the fish and the sea, over the birds in the sky. Rule over every living thing that moves on earth. God said, look, I have given you all the plants that have grain for seeds, and I have given you all the trees whose fruits have seeds in them. They will be food for you. I have given all the green plants to all the animals to eat. They will be food for every wild animal, every bird of the air, and every small crawling animal. And it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and it was very good. Evening passed and morning came. This was the sixth day. So the sky, the earth, and all that filled them were finished. By the seventh day, God finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and made it a holy day. He made it holy because all that day he rested. He rested from all the work he had done creating the world. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I believe people in Knoxville will be talking about the Yo-Yo Ma concert for a very long time. Our Common Nature. The title of the series and the music and the stories reflected this theme, Our Common Nature. Not just that we share this beautiful area that we have this in common, the Smoky Mountains and the Tennessee River and all the beauty, but that we are connected to each other and to the land and the air. We belong to one another. And I had a very deep sense during that concert that we belong to God, not as in property, this human belongs to God, which is true, but that we are cherished by God. God cherishes each of us, all of creation. The concert with cellist Yo-Yo Ma was held outside at the World's Fair Park. Official count was somewhere over 5,500, but I'm pretty sure there were over a million people there outside. The musicians were on the stage uh, on the performance lawn, and it was being live streamed to a large screen over on the festival lawn to let those people see. The huge screens at the front of the stage allowed those of us who were sitting in the back to see everything that was going on. Towards the end of the concert, Chris Thiele began on his mandolin plucking these single notes, triads going up and down. And Yo-Yo Ma on his cello played these long plaintive notes on a beautiful and quiet piece by Arvo Part. The piece is called Mirrors in Mirrors. The images on the screen went from the musicians on the stage to a gorgeous light, a big ball that was lit up. And at first I thought, oh, it's the sun sphere. They're aiming at the sun sphere. And I turned and looked behind me and thought, no, the sun sphere is not all lit up. It was brighter, this ball. And then I thought, oh, I get it. It's a picture of the galaxy. And the image shimmered for a bit. And then we got glimpses of beautiful images from outer space. It looked like the images from the James Webb telescope. And then the images became a bit more in focus and not so far away. And you began to recognize grass and mountains and Oh, that's the Smoky Mountains. And then we marveled at the yellow color. And the camera seemed to zoom in on this yellow against a backdrop of green. This beautiful flower. I think it was a pale jewel weed, or touch-me-not is what we call them. 
And then the camera pulled back and there were more of them, this field of yellow, but, but then it changed. It wasn't a daylight picture. It was more yellow, but against a night sky. And then you could hear the audience gasp, the fireflies, the synchronous fireflies of the Smoky Mountains. There were so many as we got a view from farther and farther away. But then it was like, wait a minute, is that the galaxy again? Was this the picture at the beginning? Was the galaxy fireflies? <laughs> it was breathtaking and it could make you feel small. But as we all watched in silence, now this was at the end of an outdoor concert, we were silent and quiet. We really didn't feel small. We felt connected and whole. My first thought was, wow, we're going to read Genesis 1 and Psalm 8 next Sunday. I wanted to tell the thousands of people there, go home and read Genesis 1 and Psalm 8. This is all good, the Bible says. The psalmist shouts, O oh Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. And then I imagine the psalmist's voice getting a bit quieter, more reflective. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are humans that you were mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? And then the poetry of creation is recalled, the rhythm of voice, let there be, and then a pause and an action, and then a pause and more voice, it is good. The psalmist restates the work that God has given to us. Yet you have made mortals a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and you've put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beast of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The creation story in Genesis 1 is probably one of the most familiar and yet least read passages of Scripture. We think we know what it says. We get it. We're created in the image of God and we have dominion over the earth. In our intellectual sophistication, we will dismiss the story because it does not live up to our scientific understandings of how the earth began. It is easy for us to take the creation story and put it away on a shelf, at least a mental shelf, labeled old stories from long ago from people who didn't understand how things were back then. But as I get older, and as the earth gets older, and it seems more fragile, and the things that crawled and flew and swam are in danger, maybe I need to ask a question instead of making a statement. Instead of, they didn't know what we know now, I need to pull those stories off of the shelf and ask, what did they know that I do not know? What questions were these storytellers asking and answering? They were certainly not asking how was the world created and explaining how it was created. But in their storytelling, we are hearing answers to why we were created, why the earth was created. Most scholars agree that this creation story we have in Genesis 1 was written down of course, it was part of oral tradition first for many, many years, but finally written down after the exiles have returned from Babylon. The Hebrew people who told and retold this story are celebrating that the God who has been revealed to them is one God, all-powerful, desiring beauty and order, and yet also desiring to create humanity and be with humanity. Humans are working and living alongside God, 
because that is what God desires for us to tend a garden, to care for the earth. Humans are not an afterthought, but are created in God's likeness. Now, that does not mean that God has eyebrows and a chin, but that God is always interacting with his people, calling them into community, tending to one another and to creation. God is relational. We are relational beings, people who find their life and meaning in community. God is always directing us to how we are connected to one another. We ask, what about me? What about me? God says, you are in the midst of all that I have created. You are part of my people, part of my creation. That does not make you insignificant. It makes you precious. The psalmist's question, what is man that thou art mindful of him? What are human beings? The question is at the center of Psalm 8 that we read earlier. But on either side, we have, O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Occasionally, we become arrogant when we hear that we have dominion over the earth. We take it to mean that we can lord over the earth. Instead, we are to be as keepers of the earth, to care to tend to creation and to one another. Listen to how the psalmist defines dominion. We turn to Psalm 72 and overhear a prayer for a king, a king who has dominion. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May there be abundance of grain in the land. May it wave on the tops of the mountains. The king delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life. Having dominion does not mean trampling, but ensuring there is life. Part of our United Methodist heritage is our social principles. They are part of the United Methodist Book of Discipline. The first section after the preamble is titled, The Natural World. The opening paragraph reads, All creation is the Lord's, and we are responsible for the ways in which we use and abuse it. Water, air, soil, minerals, ener energy resources, plants, animal life, and space are to be valued and conserved because they are God's creation, and not solely because they are useful to human beings. God has granted us stewardship of creation. We should meet these stewardship duties through acts of loving care and respect. The social principles are very clear that this is more than just picking up litter uh, at your campsite. The paragraph continues. Economic, political, social, and technological developments have increased our human numbers and lengthened and enriched our lives. They go on to list some of the harmful consequences of these developments that we've enjoyed. And we are called back to our charge from Genesis 1. This continued course of action jeopardizes the natural heritage that God has entrusted to all generations. Therefore, let us recognize the responsibility of the church and its members, that's each of us, to place a high priority on changes in economic, political, social, and technological lifestyles to support a more ecologically equitable and sustainable world leading to a higher quality of life for all of God's creation. As we travel this summer, we say things like, oh, it's so good to be in the mountains. It's so good to be on the beach, in the forest, at the Grand Canyon, sailing on the ocean, floating on the river. When we say these things, let's be mindful of our role as stewards, not as consumers who go out there to enjoy nature as if it is separate from us, a commodity but to remember our responsibility, first of all, to praise God for creation, 
to be astonished and in awe, then to respect and to be participants in caring about how we treat the earth. If you are away this summer somewhere beautiful, let's use this time away to be amazed, but then to return committed to the work of stewards. What are human beings? We are God's appointed caretakers. Amen. Together let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we move into a new week together, I pray that you know full well the love of Almighty God, the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and for always. Amen. Thank you.